Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the Tier 3 Cohort 1 Unable to Exit in FY23-24 Technical Assistance Support Webinar. If everyone could just enter their name and role in their school in the chat, it would be much appreciated. Uh, we do keep this for documentation. So here's our presenter information. Well, my name is Monique Sullivan, and I am the Continuous School Improvement Coordinator. Although I'm listed under ESCA, I work with the assessment team under Maine's model of school supports, which falls under several sections of the ESSA statute, but specifically Title I, Section 111, and Section uh, 1003. Section 111 is actually the provisions for school improvement, and then Section 1003 is the funding that's tied to the Tier 3 or CSI um, schools that are up, that's the tier, the tier 3 or CSI schools uh, that qualify under those um, identification criteria. And the next few slides are the mission, the vision, and the strategic priorities for the main Department of Education. And these are the driving force, are the driving forces behind all the work that we do at the MDOE and the work that we do with the schools and school teachers and leaders across the state. Today's objective is to understand how to access and review school profiles, understand next steps, the next opportunity to exit tier three status, some of professional learning opportunities and the FY25 uh, SIG application. And hopefully when you are finished, you'll be, help, be able to go on next steps and know what to do uh, and to work on over the summer. Ability to exit. I know this is always a really big question. Why, why can't I, or why did certain schools exit and why didn't our school exit? So I have uh, a very basic kind of uh, flow chart here. Uh, all of the schools that were able to exit in FY23-24 are considered cohort one schools. Cohort one schools were identified, initially identified for tier three supports in FY, in FY 2018, 2019, um, and the way, and then they should have been able to exit in three years. But with COVID and with um, implementing a new assessment system, uh, we went from Smarter Balance to uh, NWA or the main three-year assessment. And so last year when we had, or the department had uh, an audit or a monitoring visit from the U.S. Department of Education, they said that we could not exit anyone, but we had to identify. So that's why uh, there were several schools, uh, I think there were like 50 schools, that may have met the exit criteria in 22-23, but because the Fed said that we couldn't because we were, we had, um, we need to do some calibration between the NWA because it had to be criterion referenced and it was at that time it was um, norm referenced so that happened so um to be able to and all that's been that's all that's been cal cal calibrated and um, aligned so now uh to be able to exit you have to have two years of uh, not meeting the tier three identification criteria which would be 22 and 20 23 and 23 24. So if you met those, then you would have the yes category and you would either, either have exited without support or you would have exited with um, ATSI or tier one support. The schools for this particular webinar did not meet any of those criteria and they also met the criteria to continue in tier three CSI status. Um, these schools will be able to exit um, they will be able to exit in the fall of this year, 2024. Um, and and then you will be given additional FY25 school improvement funds um, and whatever additional supports that are going on with the department. Now, I know there's going to be questions about the FY25 SIG funds. So if you can hold off to those questions, I do have a slide that's going to address them. Probably not answer all your questions, but at least um, mention that. So again, Maine's model school support is run every year but identifications are made every three years for tier two um, TSI and tier three CSI, and every six years for tier one, which is ATSI. 
The next identification cycle will be the fall of 2027. However, depending on a school's eligibility to exit a status, it may be able to exit or convert to a different tiered status on all cycles. The schools highlighted in today's webinar or um, meeting is will have the ability to exit in off cycle years. The first one will be fall of 2024 when we run those numbers. And if the schools are unable to exit in 23, 24, if they do meet those exit criteria, then they'll be able to exit. If they don't, then they'll stay on tier three status again until the fall of 2025, where we'll run the model again. And if you meet those criteria, then you can exit. And then we'll do that again in fall of 2026. And then regular identifications will happen in the fall of 2027. Because the way the statute works is that you only have to be identified for tier three. And then if you can exit, then you can. If not, you have to stay on. So I just wanted to tell you like what it would look like if you were going to exit without support. So if you were gonna exit without support in the fall of 2024, then you would have to have no student groups that are experiencing challenges or emerging across all indicators. So as you can see, um, it has to be, and this doesn't have the little formula down at the bottom because they didn't, they, the school didn't, um, they were able to exit tier three status. Yes, there are some red marks in there, but if you go across, go across, it's and or. So none of these schools meet both the ands. Um, you'd have to have uh, red, some kind of red in this column or some kind of red in this column or vice versa. Um, you'd have to have red in like two of the three columns to go across. So, and I can explain this more as we get through, but this school, yes, they have reds, but they don't have two reds here and two reds here. So therefore they can exit without any support. Now the next one, this is a, another school that can exit or did exit, or this is what you would want to do. Um, if you do have some schools that, um, that are, you know, you have some student populations that are not experiencing challenges across all the indicators, then you can exit tier three status, but you would go into ATSI or tier one status because there's at least one student group that is experiencing challenges. In this particular example, there's three groups that are experiencing challenges and there's one that's not, as you can see here, the academically disadvantaged, they have a, a, a blue here and a blue here. So they don't meet this criteria down here. It has to be and, and, or and. And so they don't meet either this and, and they don't meet this and. So therefore they're exiting tier three status, but they're going to be going into tier one status because they do have three groups that are experiencing challenges. And all you need is one student group to experience challenges to be in the ATSI or tier one um, identification status. And then the last one again, if you are, um, this would make you unel or ineligible to exit if you are in the fall of 2024. Yes, you've had some growth. Yes, you have some blues here, uh, but you still have this whole, you have every single group, every single student population group is experiencing challenges in math. So yeah, they met, they wouldn't have met it in the academic or the ELA, but they did because literally there's no blue marks at all in math. So um, you kind of got to look at the black and then look at the orange and that would help you. So this is to give you some examples of like, how can I exit? How can I get out of tier three status? What would happen to me if I did get out of tier three status? I might go in with no support or I might go in with, um, with uh, go back or what we call convert to uh, tier one status. And I highly annotated these school profiles. So this is not what your school profile is gonna look like, but I went ahead and did some annotations on them to kind of explain how to use it and how to read the school profile um, that you can do with your uh, leadership teams, um, even with any of your state student, uh, sorry, your stakeholder groups, any of your parents or your other teachers that are not a part of your uh, leadership team, this might be kind of a helpful exercise for, for you. Uh, and then to, to get onto the school profiles, you would go to your main model of school supports. Uh, currently, all that's on there right now is the 21-22 school profile. We are going to be posting the school profiles on this in a couple of weeks. 
Uh, but all of the schools that were identified have been given an opportunity to look at those school profiles. All that information is in the identification letter that was sent to you over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we did make identifications in stages because there were so many and we wanted to prioritize um, who needed to get them first. But the state assessment data, which is this column here, I don't have it highlighted at this box here, but that, that data was available to schools back in January, February, and that is the 20. Uh, 22, 23 data, um, and that's what was you that was what was used to populate the 23, 24 school profiles. But like I said, currently right now on the DASA dashboard, it's the 21, it's the 22, 23 school profiles using 21, 22 data. And then I just wanted to give you an idea of just some features of the school profiles. Um, what I was showing you previously was just the school profile. We also have an end count, we have graphs, and then we have achievement goals. And uh, let's see, yeah, so this is just an example of the school profile. So if you click on the school profile, I just use this, uh, this uh, example again, you've already seen this one. And then you could go to the end count. This could tell you how many students took, participated in the assessment. Um, and this might be more of a case, uh, sometimes if you're talking about participation rates, um, I don't think I clicked any here or any examples that had questionable uh, participation rates, but some of them do have it. And the US Department of Education is requiring us to have a plan in place to how to help schools meet that 95% participation rate. And then there's the graphs page, which is sometimes just really neat to see, not neat, but it's uh, if you're more visual, then this would be helpful to see like, okay, if it's red, that's an area that we need to work on if, or not mad or um, sometimes a visual uh, is kind of nice to see. And then the last one is the achievement goals. This kind of gives you an idea of where you need to be each year. Um, remember, we're kind of a year, our data is a year behind. And then we do the, we do the, uh, we do the identifications. They're supposed to do the identifications in the fall. Um, we can't really do it year earlier because of different uh, data that needs to be uh, validated and calibrated. And that's why we always shoot for, you know, October, November. Uh, but again, you guys know what happened this year. So uh, keep that in mind. There's always things that happen. But this just tells you along the way where you're going to need to be if you are going to meet the, um, the achievement goals for each year. And this is the same for English and math. I just annotated the um, the ELA portion of it. And so, as you think about that, you will you are not you are going to be un, you're unable to exit. And so you are still in FY twenty five. Sorry, you're still in uh, um, tier three status for the FY twenty five, well, FY twenty three twenty four school year. But it continues on until you are able to exit. So keeping that in mind. Uh, there, you will have until like to, to continue to utilize your FY23 and FY24 SIG funds. Um, we will be getting, sorry, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but summer professional learning, start thinking about it now. Hopefully you have, um, if you need to bring your uh, leadership team back together to review your CNA, to update your CNA. If you're planning on participating in any kind of uh, professional development. I know a lot of you are involved in BAR, responsive classroom, regulated classroom, count me in. There is the main DOE annual summit, um, and there's going to be quite a few uh, sessions. I know that there's a couple going to be on school improvement. Um, and so once that registration gets out, hopefully you can line yourself up and get, get, get into the, some of those sessions. I've said at the tier three principal meetings, um, over the last couple of months, you want to get that FY23 SIG money a lot. You want to get that FY23 money spent because there is no more tidings waiver for that money. So that will expire on 930. And we haven't heard back about the tidings waiver for um, FY24 SIG funds. Um, you can start working on your FY25 SIG application, setting up the LT meetings and agendas, working with staff to update your CNA, your school-wide plan over the summer. Any more robust support or in-depth training on how you want to implement to help implement the initiatives that you've already started and you just need to continue. 
And then prep for the FY25 SIG applications. I know this is a very busy slide, but I was trying to put it all on together to show you that it really does all align. You want to look at your year at a glance. You want to go back to that template that we provided on your leadership team meetings. Look at your CNA or your school-wide plan. Um, look at your school profiles. Look at your achievement goals. Where do you need to be? Uh, for I know it's a little late for fall 2024, uh, but you know just to see the trajectory of that. So you want to use all your all your tools to help assess your current strategic plan. Um, and I say plans because um, you you might still have your FY23 funds and your FY24 application, and you're going to need all that to try to work to uh, plan for your FY25 SIG applications. I do want to note that. Like this year, uh, many of you were told that in the fall of 2023, you'd be able to exit. And that's uh, many of you only got a portion of your FY24 SIG application or SIG funds because the intention was that if you exited, you would just exit. You wouldn't have to, you know, you wouldn't get that additional funds. But as many of you know, in March, we realized that it was going to be a little bit more delayed in getting those identifications out. And so we just went ahead and backfilled the rest of those uh, the SIG application or SIG allocations for FY24. I'm not sure what's going to happen for FY25. I do know that everyone's going to get some sort of award for FY25. I'm not sure if it will be done incrementally like it was done in FY24. I don't know if you'll get a portion and then we'll wait to see what the identifications say. And then um, if you do exit, um, what will that look like? Will you be able to finish out the rest of the year? Will you have the opportunity of not? I mean, I don't know what all that looks like yet because um, unfortunately we never did that this year. And by the time we did it, it was, you know, we're already, you know, in the middle of May almost. So I'm not sure what that's gonna look like. We'll definitely have a better idea once we get closer to the fall um, and we get closer to the identifications. We're hoping that it won't take us as long to make those identifications now that we've worked out a lot, hopefully a lot of the kinks um, and it will be a much quicker and um, process, and we won't have to wait until May to make identifications for um, FY25. That being said, I do want to let everybody know that uh, in the past, for whatever reason, SIG funds really have not been monitored to the level that they should have been. And so this year, SIG funds will be included in the FY25 ESA consolidated uh, monitoring. So if your SAU is selected to um, uh, for monitoring, um, you will be asked, or your SAU will be asked to provide some uh, documentation and some assurances that they have met the SIG requirements. So I just threw this up here. You already know it, but I'm pretty, pretty much saying this to everyone that even for those schools that were able to exit, they're still responsible. They could be asked to show this information because it will be for FY. It'll be for uh, not FY25 SIG money. It'll be for FY23 and possibly FY20. Well, possibly, definitely FY24, and I'm not sure about FY23 yet. So we're usually a year behind when it comes to monitoring. Um, and I think that that is it. So the resources and opportunities, um, here's the websites for those. Here's our contact information. And, um, and here's how you can stay connected to the main department of education. So I am going to stop uh, recording at this point and then just answer any questions you may have.